Greetings from Episcopal Church to the Ascension. I'm Father Paul here with another good book club. Fact two, I missed yesterday. Apologies. So I have the reading for Sunday, January 19th, John 5, 1 through 18. And for today, Monday, January 20th, John 5, 19 through 29. Uh, we'll continue in the fifth chapter tomorrow, but for now, we'll take these readings together. So... After this, there was a Jewish festival, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, near the Sheep Gate in the north city wall, is a pool with the Aramaic name Bethsaida. It had five covered porches and a crowd of people who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed sat there. A certain man was there who had been sick for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, knowing that he had already been there a long time, asked him, Do you want to get well? The sick man answered, Sir, I don't have anyone who can put me in the water when it is stirred up. When I'm trying to get in, someone else has gotten in ahead of me. Jesus said to him, Get up, pick up your mat, and walk. Immediately the man was well, and he picked up his mat and walked. Now, that day was the Sabbath. The Jewish leaders said to the man who had been healed, It's the Sabbath. You aren't allowed to carry your mat. He answered, The man who made me well said to me, Pick up your mat and walk. They inquired, Who is this man who said to you, Pick it up and walk? The man who had been cured didn't know who it was because Jesus had slipped away from the crowd gathered there. Later, Jesus found him in the temple and said, See, you have been made well. Don't sin anymore in case something worse happens to you. The man went and proclaimed to the Jewish leaders that Jesus was the man who had made him well. As a result, the Jewish leaders were harassing Jesus since he had done these things on the Sabbath. Jesus replied, My father is still working, and I am working too. For this reason, the Jewish leaders wanted even more to kill him, not only because he was doing away with the Sabbath, but because he called God his own father, thereby making himself equal with God. And now at the 19th verse, Jesus responded to the Jewish leaders, I assure you that the son can't do anything by himself except what he sees the father doing. Whatever the Father does, the Son does likewise. The Father loves the Son and shows him everything that he does. He will show him greater works than these that you will marvel. As the Father raises the dead and gives life, so too does the Son give life to whomever he wishes. The Father doesn't judge anyone, but he has given all judgment to the Son, so that everyone will honor the Son just as they honor the Father. Whoever doesn't honor the Son doesn't honor the Father who sent him. I assure you that whoever hears my word and believes in the one who sent me has eternal life and won't come under judgment, but has passed from death into life. I assure you that the time is coming and is here when the dead will hear the voice of God's Son, and those who hear it will live. Just as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself. He gives the Son authority to judge because he is the human one. Don't be surprised by this, because the time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice. Those who do those who did good things will come out into the resurrection of life, and those who did wicked things into the resurrection of judgment. Now, I'll apologize. It's a lot to absorb all at once, you know, given that we're combining the two days of readings. But uh, I think part of what stands out to me, there's a, a lot of different areas we could reflect on or speak to in this in this longer passage or either part of it. But part of, as I've been reading this, I've been reminded uh, in doing Bible study as a, a seminarian, I went several times to meet with Bishop Mark McDonald, who ordained me to the diaconate and priesthood while Bishop of Alaska. And one of the things he observed to me was, uh, and to those gathered, was that 
Every time the gospel is read, given voice to, proclaimed, it changes the world. Now, while I admired him and his teaching a great deal at the time, I was reluctant to believe that. But I'll have to say, it's part of the motivation in recording these is that even sitting here alone in this space, I believe I am changed and the world can be changed through the reading and reminding of these scriptures. And I think that this is only magnified when it is shared, even in a small group, the impact of the teaching that we find in the Gospels is unlike the other things we experience in life. And so it, it transcends things like the Sabbath in this passage it, and uh, other experiences, other spiritual disciplines that are still remain extremely important. I think that if we take the gospel in total and Jesus teaching in total, we know that the Sabbath is valued and that the, the law remains intact. It's just it shifts our understanding and our interpretation of the law. The law is important. How we interpret and live into it is also very important. So let the gospel be our guide. Let it transform us and expect that as we read it, as we live into it, as we proclaim it, that it will change us and the world around us. Thanks for listening, being part of this particular expression of the Good Book Club and the reading of the gospel. I hope you'll continue to listen and reflect with us online and otherwise, and I hope to see you in church.